Welcome to the Living Superhuman Fitness Podcast, where we take you inside our gym, CrossFit Palm Beach, each week. It's here that we are creating new superhumans every day, transforming people's lives, helping them reach a level of health they never knew possible. We strive to answer your most burning questions on fitness, health, nutrition, training, motivation, mindset, lifestyle, and more. If you have a question, please email us at info at CrossFitPalmBeach.com. You can also learn more on our blog, livingsuperhuman.com. And if you have a moment, we'd love a review from you on iTunes. All right, it's time. Let's stop being average and start living superhuman. All right, guys, welcome to today's episode of the Living Superhuman Fitness Podcast. My name is Andrew, and I'm joined by a couple of our coaches today. I'm Tony. Zach. And today we're going to be talking about why strength is not your weakness. This is something that we hear a lot from our members is, I need to get stronger, I need to get stronger. And a lot of them are, are asking this question in the context of wanting to get better at CrossFit. Some people just have goals to get stronger, but... They want to get stronger in order to get better at CrossFit. And usually we're trying to, to do an assessment of them as a, a kind of in a holistic sense as them as an athlete to figure out, okay, do they need to get stronger? And in a lot of cases, strength is not the weak area. It's other things that they could bring up before that or with that um, in order to become better. And there's things that they should probably target um, way before trying to think that they need to get stronger. So. That's what we're gonna talk about in today's episode, and we'll kind of kick it off with uh, talking about um, some of the, the hierarchy of an athlete, um, as brought up by Greg Glassman. Um, so when we talk about that, we brought it up in our What is Fitness episode. If you haven't listened to that, go back and check that one out. Um, but after nutrition, which is at the bottom of that pyramid, the second thing is metabolic conditioning, or that's you know that aerobic capacity, um, your engine essentially. So that's really the second tier of that pyramid, and then from there it goes gymnastics, then weightlifting, and then sport. So when most people are talking about getting stronger, they're referring to weightlifting, where that's more at the top of the pyramid, and if we don't have that foundation of, of a good engine and solid body weight movements, then um, usually that weightlifting is not holding us back. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, goes to, goes to programming, you know, because typically when your members are like, you know, I want to get stronger at this, I want to get stronger at this, they're trying to give you subtle cues of how you should program. And a lot of gyms today, a lot of CrossFit gyms, are strength bias in the programming. Everyone feels that they need to have a strength piece and then a metabolic conditioning piece, right, and kind of have a little bit of both, um, you know. And I think lately it's starting to move in the direction of working more on efficiency in movement and moving better. And then that ultimately gives you the returns that you want rather than just throwing strength pieces in everywhere. Yeah, I think one thing people miss about CrossFit is you can get stronger without doing specific strength work, especially in your first, especially in your first two years of doing CrossFit. Just by picking an appropriate weight for that workout. So when we're saying, hey, you need to pick a weight that you can get 10 reps unbroken with, if you listen to that advice, and regardless of whether that means you're doing scaled or you're doing RX, you go up to a weight and you pick a weight that you can do 10 unbroken reps with, chances are you're gonna get the appropriate stimulus for that day, and over time that's going to make you stronger even though you didn't do a one rep max, you're not consistently working at 80 to 90% of your one rep max. I think a lot of people too, when they think of strength, they think, Weightlifting, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna weightlift and get stronger. Whereas we know really to solidify that strength and to have that proper foundation, we're talking about gymnastic competency. We're talking about can you move your body properly? Can you move it for reps? Do you have the endurance to move your own body weight in multiple different planes and movements? Um, I think, you know, Coach Josh brought up in one of our um, podcasts before that he thinks he's getting stronger in weightlifting because he's doing more gymnastics. And I think that that just speaks to that, that hierarchy that Glassman um, laid out for us, which is um, you know, before you move into that weightlifting and before you're working on your strength there, you're working on, on really mastering the strength of your own body and the weight of your own body, which most people now, and especially nowadays, are, are kind of moving past that. They kind of jump over that point. And, um, and that's really not the, 
not the proper progression that's laid out for us by the CrossFit. Yeah, I like to use the, uh, the CrossFit girl benchmarks as kind of like an example of that. So if you look at some of the, the more famous ones, like Karen is 150 wall balls for time. So um, really most people that are in our gym right now, of the several hundred people we have, most of them can handle a, a 20 or 14 pound wall ball for a, a given set of 10 to 20 reps at least, right? Yeah. So if we're talking about their ability to get through 150 of them, chances are it's not a strength issue that's gonna prevent them from getting through that. Um, you look at workouts like Fran and Diane, uh, Cindy, Grace, Isabel. Um, Diane's the heaviest barbell, it's a 225 or 155 for women barbell on a deadlift though. So a lot of our, our people, if they've been with us for a year or two or they just have a background where they've been lifting on their own, uh, maybe coming from like a gold gym environment, they can move that weight. They can move it for five or 10 reps and they can get it going. But really where they're, they're gonna struggle in that workout is either the last 10 or 15 reps of the deadlift because their engine's broken down or their mobility, or it's gonna be the handstand push-ups. You know, or in a workout like, like Fran, it's typically the, the thrusters wear us down, but if we get stuck, it's gonna be stuck on the pull-ups. So we're going back to, to really the gymnastics movements or the engine being the limiting factor in a lot of these workouts. Um, and, and those are just, you know, those are basically what CrossFit's kind of built on as those girl workouts. Yeah, and let's let's talk about Karen for a second, where, where we are talking about 150 wall balls, you know, our favorite. Everybody just do it. Just members, stop and do it. Members love Karen. It's their favorite. Who doesn't? I like, I like Karen plus something else, like where that's like the buy-in. Yeah, it's not enough. <laughs> um, but when it comes to Karen, like, you know, some people might try RX and have a tough time with them and be like, man, I just got to do more like squats. Because my legs were just gone in that workout. And it's like, well, whose legs weren't gone in that workout? Everyone's legs were gone. But if you increase your, if you go work on your squats and you increase your squats by, let's say, 10%, you know, in weight, you're not going to decrease your Karen time by 10%, you know. But on the other hand, say you go work on your hip flexor strength, you know, so that you can keep your elbows higher with the ball up by your face and not be bending over and straining your lower back to hold that wall ball, um, you know. Say you get a 10% improvement in mobility and then a 10% improvement in your form. You know, that's going to exponentially help your time rather than trying just to achieve that 10% increase in strength. Yes, that efficiency too. And, yeah. and being more mobile, you're more efficient. I, mean, I found that to be true. And um, the more efficiently you're moving, the, your times go down. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with strength at all. I mean, a lot of people, we were talking about this earlier, we, some of our lifts are down. But we do better in those move, with those movements in certain workouts because our engine is more developed and we've created, we have better positioning, we have better technique, our mobility is, I know my mobility has gotten way better since I've started with CrossFit, something that I never even thought about. So um, there's a lot of factors that are going to improve your scores in CrossFit and a lot of times, like we've been talking about, it, it's, the strength is not, is not the limiting factor there. Yeah, it, it comes down to, to technique and efficiency for me. and. Um, you know, flexibility generally is the big limiter for a lot of people and their ability to get into those positions, whether it be like a deep overhead squat or just full lockout overhead in the arms. Um, but then a lot of it's just, just that, uh, that like dedication and commitment to trying to move well. And the people who, who do that over and over again, even the ones who have uh, current limited limitations and flexibility, but you can see they're putting in the effort to move better each and every time. Each and every time they do a wall ball, there's an effort to stay back in their heels or drive the knees out or keep that ball up by their face. They don't get lazy and let that ball drop below their chin. Um, then you can see when that, when that projects itself out, after 10 or 20 reps, you don't really notice. After 30 or 40 reps, maybe you start to feel it. After 50 or 60, it's, you know, you really see how it affects you. And then once you get into the, the 100, to 150 like a Karen, you're just a disaster at that point. As soon as you become inefficient, each rep, just think about using 10% more energy for each rep. And then as that breaks down, it's 20% more energy because you've broken down even further. So, you know, in any type of workout, if you can keep technique as long as physically possible, which hopefully is through the entire workout, um, you're gonna conserve energy for the end of that, even if you don't have a great aerobic engine yet. Now, if you have a great engine and you move really well, a lot of those workouts are going to feel effortless for the first yeah. 50 to 70% of them.
Yeah, if you've got, if you've developed that that engine a little bit, you've worked on technique, mobility. These some of these girl wads start to get fun. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you sound well, so, surprised well, when well, you said some, that. Well, some a lot of people uh, that can squat as much as myself or squat as much as any other elite athlete, they get to 85 wall balls and they're done. Where I know guys that squat way less, they can do 150 unbroken. So it it has it, it it you know there's a little bit of a mental aspect to that too, but there's a you know just a lot more that has to be looked into and developed, especially when you get to the later later ends of a workout, and that's where it all it all starts to show itself. It gets exponentially worse as uh, we get towards the end. Yeah, and we all came from all three of us came from an environment where we were doing a lot of um, the typical like globo gym strength training on our yeah. own. So we came into CrossFit pretty strong. So we have a certain kind of bias towards that, but we see it all the time in our clients. We saw it in ourselves, especially when we first started, is that the strength allowed us to move the weight, but it, I mean, it led to some disastrous workouts. And usually those are the people that we kind of fear the most for at first when they come into their gym, when they have all the strength and the power in the world, but they don't have the engine to match because they're gonna go out so hard and then they're not gonna be able to sustain it. And it's usually like a crash and burn yeah. uh, type effect where you know, they're, the, someone who's super strong, there's, they have no chance of putting a top 20 score on the whiteboard. Whereas if we see someone like uh, a Billy, for example, we talked about this in previous podcasts, he, he walked into our gym barely working out, but he's got a superior engine and he put up a top three score against all of our coaches and some of our best athletes in an open workout. So someone with a superior engine was able to walk in and put up a top three score, whereas someone who has superior strength but no engine to match will never do that in, in a CrossFit style workout. I mean, almost never do that. Yeah, and so. I, th I think sometimes those workouts, especially now, are almost designed to pick those people out, yeah. weed them out. And, and uh, like we were talking about 16.2. You know, okay, if you're really strong with those heavy cleans as they're getting You want to go over the workout? So it was... Um, it was 25, 25 toes, of toes of bar. 50 double unders, and then you think you had... 15, 15 cleans. Cleans at, was it 95 pounds? I think it started at 135, 135? 95, and, and you had four minutes to do it, and every time you completed that in four minutes, you got a new round plus a heavier weight. Yeah, so a lot of, a lot of people were looking at that workout, especially the stronger guys were licking their chops, like, oh, this is going to be great. Until you got through the 25 double unders or 25 toes of bar, which is not an easy number for that movement, and then 50 dubs, and then you finish the cleans. If you get that done, you can earn your right to go into the next round. Well, if you don't have that engine, you're not going to get to the. I think it was the 225 was the third bar. Yeah. 225, yeah. which for some guys are like, oh, I can move that 11 times, no problem. But if you can get there, if you have the aerobic capacity to get there, if the gymnastic capacity to get there, um, if you've been working, if you've been working hard, you'll get there. But you can't just be strong and get to the end of that workout. And we found that out. I think a lot of us found that out. Yeah. Yeah. And someone like Billy, like they're just strong all over, right? They don't have like absolute strength in their legs or absolute strength in their shoulders. Right, it's just their whole body is strong. Super strong core. <laughs> and that's what, I think yeah. that's what CrossFit helps every athlete develop. I mean, the, the 10 skills. And through the 10 skills, you develop a fit body throughout. You know, mm -hmm. how do we work out abs without ever doing a sit-up, you know, mm -hmm. per se. But we're just constantly working the whole body through our training. Yeah, I, I think that's, a, that's one of the be biggest parts of CrossFit, I think, that draws a lot of people to it is that every day is sort of that total body experience and, and yeah we do target certain things certain body parts certain movements but a lot of times when you walk out the door you're not sure what's going to be sore <laughs> like the next day which is kind of the is the cool thing about crossfit and i think that's what makes it better than any other training methodology is is that it, you're constantly incorporating every single body part to make something move whether it's an external load or your own body uh, whether it's a gymnastic pull-up or a clean and jerk, I mean, you're using everything to make that happen. And uh, I think that's the beauty in it. Yeah, Tony touched on the, the 10 fitness <clears throat> skills. I need some more fitted. Um, <laughs> Tony touched on the 10 fitness skills. I just want to cover that in more detail because I love that model of thinking about, um, you know, fit, fitness and CrossFit. Um, so the 10 skills are things like strength, speed, power, um, but also things like balance, coordination, agility, 
uh, flexibility. So, you know, strength is one of those things. It's one of those 10 components, but it's only one of those 10 components. And maybe you could lump power into strength because those are similar. So that's two of the 10, but there's still eight other components that, that really have little to do with strength that make you a well-rounded athlete, but also a well-rounded person outside the gym. You know, you should be able to, to reach your hands fully above your head and you should be able to bend all the way over pain-free. And, um, you know, in, when it comes to doing well in workouts, um, you got to be able to, to overhead squat and you got to be able to snatch and, and do handstand push-ups and, and things like that to do well in a lot of the workouts that we have um, in the gym. It's also the time that you put in cannot, you can't, there's no shortcuts to doing well in this sport. So you have to put the time in and increase the volume over time and increase your 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 just your overall volume for the sport and for all the movements. So you might be able to, I know guys that can come in, we, a great example, well, I won't mention them, but they can <laughs> slaughter a workout. But if we were to do another workout an hour later, they would not. It's just they don't have that volume. They haven't done that much work where I know somebody like myself, I might, I might not be able to go to quite to that output, but I know an hour later I can do it again. And I know an hour later I can do it again. And that doesn't make me better or worse, it just makes me a different athlete. And you, get a, you start to become aware of the things that you're good at and not good at, strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, some people, weaknesses is recovery and getting yeah. better at and getting you know, recovered enough to do the next movement or the next segment or the next workout. Um, that's a big part I know with a lot of our newer clients is that they'll come in, they might be incredibly good at, you know, really good athletes, they'll get through the first part, they look like studs, and then we get to part B, whatever that is, and they're already falling off because they're just like, I just, I got nothing left. And that's what I hear a lot from the, the better athletes that start CrossFit is, they're like, oh, I felt great at the beginning, but I'm falling off now. It's like, yeah, well, that's, that's part of it. It's being able to recover and your body's ability to recover from what you just did. I'm just not strong enough. I'm just not strong enough. Right? <laughs> yeah. but, no, uh, there's other things. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the recovery because um, I think that really is the key to it all. I think the best, the best athletes that we see in our gym, the best athletes in the world are the ones that recover the fastest. And I think people overlook the role of uh, the engine as it relates to recovery. So they see you know, an engine as the person who can, can run a marathon or can do a lot of rounds in a 20 minute AMRAP or whatever it might be, but they don't realize that the aerobic system is, is a whole system in your body and it's serving to recover whether it be between sets. So you do a set of 25 wall balls, your ability to get your breathing, your heart rate back down before a set of heavy power cleans is your aerobic system. That's what's bringing that down. That's your engine. That's why it was the foundation after nutrition in that pyramid. It's your recovery between days or between workouts. If you're doing multiple workouts in a day, you do something in the AM, your ability to hit that PM session hard is your aerobic system allowing you to recover between. It's your engine. And then to do that day after day or week after week, that is your aerobic you know, system. So you could see some people that can hit a workout really hard on one day, but they might be crushed for two or three days in a row. They can't repeat those efforts. And that's generally an engine issue, not a strength issue. It's not because they're not strong enough. It's because they don't have the engine to support that and repeat those efforts, mm -hmm. um, whether it be in a given workout or in a given week of workouts. And that's also become very big in the sport, where now you see a lot of, a lot of even our local competitions are two and three days long. Um, you know, they have seven, eight, nine events in them. I mean, we were just at the one this past weekend with a couple of our athletes that are, um, you know, a little bit more towards the amateur level. They're, this is some of their first competitions and they're doing seven workouts in two days. It's like, yeah, this is, yeah, it's a lot of volume and it's part of the sport. And if you're not training for that, um, and as a coach, if you see that your athletes aren't training for that and they're gonna sign up for a two day competition, as a coach, I think it's your job to be like, hey, you, you realize you're gonna do six to eight workouts. You need to be coming in here twice a day for the next couple of weeks, before, or at least a few days during the week to prepare for that. Because you're not gonna come in here and do a 60 minute workout every day and then go to the competition and do three workouts in one day and four the next. It just doesn't, it doesn't happen. If you haven't done it, it won't, it won't happen for you on game day. So yeah. I think that's become a big part of it. I think that's an important point to talk about the coaching side of it. Um, you know, because like, say you do have a, an athlete that has a competition coming up a month away, a couple weeks away, 
you can't just get them on a strength program and get them stronger in a movement for if they know the workout's coming and they, and they need to get their legs stronger. I mean, you could focus more on moving better and mobility and just getting in the proper state before that competition. And it's going to help you so much more than, than working on your strength uh, for that movement. And, you know, as coaches, like, we want to get you moving the best possible. You know, we're looking for the ideal movement because when people are moving, you know, ideally, you are most efficient, all right? And if, say, a coach walks the floor and you see everyone moving at 80% or 85% of what the, their potential is or ideal movement, you know, you can, you can be fine with that and just say, good job, good job, guys. Like, keep moving, keep doing it. But, you know, that's an extra 10 to 20% you're leaving on the table for that athlete. You know, because you're not helping them fine tune their movement, which could ultimately help their workout. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we've hit on that efficiency a lot. A lot of people think that when we're correcting and cueing and stuff, we're trying to just avoid injury. We're trying to help you move better so you don't get hurt. And that is a key component of why we coach and we cue and correct. But it, you nailed it on the head, it's performance. Your ability to move well is not leaving performance on the table. And I think, you know, whether we, we say it out loud or not, we all want to do better in the gym. Like, even if we're just an everyday person, we want to see our scores improve. And our ability to move better, um, squat better, or, or, or move a barbell more efficiently, um, you know, that's, that's unrelated to strength, is going to lead to better performance. I think also, just, this may be a little bit <clears throat> off the topic, but it just made me think of it was that honest assessment of what your strengths and weaknesses are is so hard to do. It doesn't matter what, how long you've been doing it. If you're a coach of five plus years, you've been in it for a while. Like for myself, even I still am, my mind is blown sometimes at how much better I can get when I work out a weakness for 30 days. Instead of focusing on more of my strengths, I let those go to the side and focus on my mobility and focus on some of those things and just things get better really fast and sometimes it happens almost so it, it works so well that it blows my mind I, I, I can't even believe that I didn't try it first but um, you know if you're honest with yourself and say okay I may not be as strong as I'd like to be but what else am I not very good in and then when you start to determine some of those like number okay so let's say strengths your number one thing well what's number two three and four I bet if you started picking at some of those you might start accelerating your progress even further because getting stronger takes a long time there's no easy way to get stronger steroids is the only other way <laughs> that, that you do it um, and we, we're really against that so um, you know that's really something that is going to if, if your goal is to get better and you've chosen strength as that avenue you've picked probably the slowest way to get better if you're focusing on your uh, your rowing technique you know how your, your volume on the bike um, your your core strength your flexibility things like that are really easy to control like mobility I can't believe I didn't work on my mobility earlier because I go all this thing about getting stronger and now I start working on mobility and my numbers and my Olympic lifts are going up all the time and it's because I'm doing things that I hate to say it's easy, but it's just it's easy easy way to get better for me. And I yeah. think for a lot of people, it's that too. It's um, you know banging your head against the wall is not necessarily going to get you better. It might feel like you're getting better because you're tired and you hit the pillow at night and you're you're done and you, you've used all the energy you have and you feel like you've worked really hard. But sometimes working hard, working smarter will ultimately get you further faster than working harder. Yeah, I think there's. Uh, like once you get to a certain level of strength and proficiency, you know, we're not trying to say that strength is not important because it is, but once you get to a certain level, there's, there's so many other things that are going to give you more side benefits than like the actual thing. So like you trained flexibility, but you saw all these other things get better. Once you get to a certain level of strength, you may see that strength still improve, but it won't give you the same side benefits where you're going to see three or four other things improve. Like, you know, you build your front squat up, you may not see the, the wall balls improve the way you wanted it to, the way you're hoping to as kind of that side benefit. Whereas targeting flexibility did lead to this cascade of three or four things improving. Um, I think that a lot of people go to strength initially because it's more concrete. And it looks better on Instagram, but um, <laughs> it's more concrete. Like if, I, if my max at one point was 100 pounds and it's only 90 today, I feel like man, why isn't it where it was at 100? It should be at 105. It should keep climbing. I, I need that number to go up. Whereas 
in a, given, in a given week, most of your workouts are not benchmark repeat workouts. So in a 20 minute AMRAP where you got five rounds and it's the first time of you doing that workout, it's not this concrete comparison that you can say, oh, my engine decreased by 10% and I need to get my engine that much better. Whereas on the strength side, it's more concrete. It's a little bit sexier because of the, uh, the whole like ability to post a PR on Facebook or Instagram. But um, you know, really, it's not it's not the missing link that most people think it is. Yeah, it's something we try to encourage recently in our gym. Is you know, you have a like a Cindy PR or a Fran PR. Put it on the board. Like that's a PR too. Like it's it, more important, I think. It may sound a little weird on social media when you say like, "Hey, I PR'd my Fran," and like people are like, "What he do, Fran? <laughs> 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 what he do to her?" <laughs> I mean, it's, there's a lot of, it goes, I think back to there's just those secret unwritten improvements that you can't see on paper um, that if you're, if you're really sincerely paying attention to what you're doing in the sport, um, you can see them and you can celebrate them. Uh, I know for me, my back squat in the last year is down probably 20 to 30 pounds below where I, my lifetime PR, but my overhead squat is about 50 pounds higher than it was last year. So with, with mobility and flexibility, I've increased that with my overhead squat increasing, my snatch has gotten better, but my back squat's down, it's lower than it's ever been. So um, we were talking about strict press, my strict press is lower than it's ever been, mm -hmm. but I still am doing better overhead in most movements. So it, 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 you know, there's, you think that you need to be stronger in something, but when you try something else out, you start to, you start to realize that that's not what it's all about. And then once you realize that, you're more confident in trying things that are different, I think. Um, just the more I try different things and, and try and focus on different skills, the more my eyes are open to, you don't really know what, to, you need to try everything. That kind yeah. of, that's where my mind is now. Is I was always so locked in on one thing. Now, I, for me, I, if I try to focus on like more things, a broader view of, of my skills, and focus on them a little bit more often, everything seems to come up for me. So in your training, Zach, um, as an elite athlete, we'll give you that title. Um, like, I'll take it. <laughs> Ish. How, how Ish. much do they have you one rep max and assess your maxes and so, all that? So, you know, there might be an assessment period sometime in the off season, like in the summertime, we'll do a little bit, but, um, you know, a lot of times it's 2K row, 50 calories for time on the bike. Um, you know, Helen, we test Helen a lot. I mean, I test, I've tested Helen more than I've tested my back squat. I've tested... Fran in the last year, I've tested Fran probably five times in the last two years, four or five times. I've tested, I have not tested my back, my, my deadlift, one rep deadlift in that time. So I've tested that five times, deadlift not even once in two years. It's been over two years since I've tested it. Um, now strength I know is a bigger, is, is a strength of mine. I know that I'm strong from an absolute standpoint. I'm, I'm a strong athlete. So my coach knowing that, doing an honest assessment, We've now been able to pinpoint where I'm weaker at, and it's not strength. So where, um, for example, Dom might be in doing, he'll do squatting two to three times a week because we know that strength is something he needs to work on because it's been, he's, been, he's done assessment after assessment. I'm a totally opposite athlete, and for me, I might squat once a week. Recently, it's been once a week, but even for the last couple of months, I didn't squat at all. I didn't squat at all. So, uh, you know, those are things that you can only do until you've put everything on paper mm -hmm. and maybe had somebody else look at it, not just yourself, but like your Yeah, you need someone else. You, you trust to look at and, and, and that I think helps too. Yeah, and you're getting better at what's important to you and that is getting better at the sweet spot weights, you yes. know, being able to just go up and do clean and jerks at 135, you know, over and over again. And, mm -hmm. and that's how you gauge how you've gotten better. You know how you feel through a you know clean and jerks or or an overhead squat. You know whereas you're like, oh man, 135 used to feel heavy, and now it's like just an air squat to you. You know, and, and also with every single skill, I notice that they don't. None of them. Not most of my skills. Do, I mean, I don't PR a lot of things. A lot of them stay the same, or they kind of move up and down. But um, for a lot of them, you know, once my technique improves like something will jump up and it happens all the time where like I have not gotten stronger at pulling I just haven't I have not gotten stronger really at pulling anything I work on pulling all the time but 
my 12 rope climbs for time has gotten significantly better because I move way more efficiently with my technique up the rope than I ever did. I've always been able to climb the rope, but it keeps getting better because my technique keeps getting better. I'm not getting stronger at pulling, certainly not lost any weight. So it's like, you know. <laughs> the beard the, is much bigger the beard, than it's ever maybe been. Another so pound the beard, but other than that, I mean, I'm pretty much the same weight all the time. Uh, but I constantly get sharper and sharper and more comfortable moving up and down the rope. Now that time is, I mean, my time for 12 rope climbs has significantly improved and there's no improvement in strength at all. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people think, well, it's, I got stuck because I can't, my, my arms gave out. Well, if your arms gave out in a rope climb, unless you're doing a lot of rope climbs, it's more than likely your technique. It's more than likely your ability to clamp down on the rope and use your legs because if you can do that, you're not going to fail pulling on the rope. It's going to be somewhere else in the workout, more than likely. Yeah, I think it's important to, to kind of point out that, that the, the framework we're talking from is one of a well-rounded fitness. We talked about in our What is Fitness episode is we're trying to get a well-rounded fitness. And if, if you embrace that aspect of CrossFit and that's, that's why you do CrossFit, then this is kind of the approach you need to have. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get stronger or maybe even wanting to bias towards wanting to get stronger and doing more strength work. You just have to realize that you are biasing towards that and you are no longer moving towards the most well-rounded fitness. And that's, you know, that's what we're trying to achieve in CrossFit. And um, you know, if your goal is to get stronger, great. You know, we can give you strength programs. You can do a lot of the extra competitors work that are geared towards uh, getting stronger. But if your goal is to be the best, well, most well-rounded athlete you can be, you might have examples like Zach where uh, your back squat goes from 450 to 425. And it's, you know, but that, he was able to focus his time and energy on what was really holding him back. And now he's a better, more well-rounded athlete because of it. And now I'm going back and working on the squatting now because we've, we've done that and we committed to it and we did it for a long time. I'm talking about my coach and I and, and just gone back and forth. And so now it's like, okay, well, let's work on the squatting a little bit. We've, you've put the work in, you've improved in these areas. Let's go back and, and get that area stronger a little bit too because there's no reason why you wouldn't work on your strength or not continue to try to get stronger. But if it's such a, if there's other glaring weaknesses, as in my case, then you know it's time to really focus in on those and when you know you've made those improvements then you can say okay let's go back and work on strength or let's go back and work on squatting or whatever it is yeah i think to bring it full circle uh yeah just remember that to get stronger there's different avenues to take and that's mm -hmm. what we're trying to get across is that there's different av avenues through form mobility and movement efficiency awesome we'll wrap it up awesome. thanks for joining us see ya